G'day, welcome back to Stupid Fast RC. Today we are having a look at La Trax alias and also going to compare that to the Traxxas Adam. Now, <clears throat> before I start, I want to tell you an interesting story. Well, I think it's interesting about La Trax. Now, La Trax was founded in 1974 by a chap called Jim Jenkins, who is the father of the CEO and owner of Traxxas. Now, La Trax is a separate brand, but their brand promise is that they will deliver high performance, low cost product, RC product, to the market. So under $200. So this, this is backed by Traxxas, but it is not Traxxas. You can go to the separate website, check out some of their stuff. They've got some cool looking cars. I might uh, grab one of those myself later on and have a look. But in the meantime, we've got this. Now, let's have a look inside the box. <clears throat> This is what you get inside the box. It is completely and utterly ready to run. All you need to do the char is charge the battery and um, here's one I prepared earlier. I know I'm that's cheating, but I've done it. Now, so it has a controller which is very, very similar to the Atten in appearance. Um, we've got a charger and some tools. We can also, uh, in, in amongst this, there are a couple of little sticks, if you like, that you can replace these, if you don't like the feel of the round uh, pads on top of the controller, you can actually exchange, uh, you can undo those and put in sticks. So that it feels, it's a bit more like um, these sort of things. Okay, so that's very considerate of them. Um, what do we know about this? Well, six axis control. It has three modes and uh, forgive me, I'm going to have to get the wording off the lid. It is something like easy, uh, fast and expert. Now, basically the difference between easy and fast is the amount of tilt and expert gives you almost full control um, to get complete control um, you go into a menu on here you press the stick in and uh, change the variability of the control rates so in easy mode it's got six axis control in expert mode three axis and um, you're able to get complete control in expert mode um, in the fast mode you're able to do tricks and these tricks are the usual flips but um, you're able to actually pre-program one of these buttons and that's kind of a bit of an easter egg as well because it's not an instruction. You have to go to the website to p download the PDF to give you the full instructions or watch one of the Latrax videos. Although that said, I didn't see it on the Latrax video. However, you can program these buttons up to do like four, five, four, up to five flips in a row just by pressing the button. And uh, it's quite cool because it'll actually rise up a so it'll it'll start from a position, rise up, do the flips, and it'll end back where it started, which is very cool. The other thing is that it'll do is a pirouette, and a pirouette is basically just a spin. It'll do a series of five spins, but while it's doing those spins, and they're not very fast spins, you are still able to use the control on the right to change the direction. So it's got a mode called virtual heading lock, and while it's spinning, it still knows which direction that you want it to go in, which is very, very cool. So battery, 650 milliamp battery here. It's a LiPo, it's very small. Uh, gives you eight to 15 minutes worth of flight, depending on how fast you're flying it. You know, obviously all the usual things, how hard, how fast, um, and whether or not you turn the LEDs on and off. Now, under normal circumstances, this button here turns the LEDs on and off and a uh, charger with a fast charge option for 45 minutes. Doesn't say that on there. I have that on reasonable um, information, it's 45 minutes. And ch ch plug it into a USB. And if you, uh, you can even get one of these USB adapters for your mains. And this actually tells you how much current is going out. And will also let you know when it's fully charged, which is sort of a little bit more informative than little lights that go on and off, but still cool. Because of its size, um, etc., it's it's good for indoors or outdoors. So um, pretty agile in the wind, but also really cool for indoors, um, providing that you're not gonna 
bring it in and smash stuff, I guess. But it's also very robust. Uh, I've seen videos of people drive, well actually, La Trax have got a video where they, somebody drives a bike over the middle of it. I'm not sure that I'd do that myself. Anyway, there is a video of someone driving a bike over it and also people flying it into signs and all sorts of stuff. In fact, that's a Latrax video as well where they flick it into a sign over and over again in a tree, which is um, very cool. So durable it is, and um, I might be able to show you some of that there. You can see the flexibility of that arm there. It's not gonna snap. It's, it has a fair bit of give in it, which is fantastic. And there are spare propellers. Okay. So apart from the very, very large price tag difference, well, sort of like five times the difference in price. Um, the Atten is quite a different beast. This has three flight modes as well, but I guess the most notable difference is that you can carry a camera, and you can either carry it on a fixed bracket or a gimbal. Um, this gimbal's actually currently got its rubber mounting on it, but as you can see there, it's a uh, three-axis gimbal. Works quite well, actually. Um, the only downside I find with these gimbals is that um, they're only suitable for Hero 3s and um, Hero 3s are a bit uh, out of date, shall we say. And the, other, uh, the thing about it is this bracket is specifically made for that Hero 3 and you can't even get uh, the clone heroes or clone micro cameras in there. So that's, if you were going to do that, you're going to have to go to the bracket and of course the bracket comes with all the inherent problems of vibration and all the rest of it. And this does absorb the vibration and the movement quite well. This is actually quite a good gimbal. Um, three modes, longer flight time and um, possibility of buying a bigger battery for your um, Atten which will fit in. Whereas your, oh, see how flexible that is. You can put it on top of it, it doesn't break. Your alias, on the other hand, is only really gonna fit that size battery and so you're probably just gonna need to get more than one. Um, the Traxxas comes with two different size batteries. Well, there's, there's two models. There's the um, Atten and the Atten Plus. The Atten Plus comes with the gimbal and a bigger battery and the Atten comes with a three amp battery. Now the problem that I find, and, and this is a bit of a gripe, this is the charger for the Atten and it's very specific because the balance lead is blended into the main plug and of course then you only can use the proprietary charger. And the thing that I find about these um, Traxxas batteries is that they balloon with monotonous regularity. In fact I've had one catch on fire and this battery is in fact only about two months old and I've, I've they I still I've got a couple for my uh, Traxxas e Revo which I continue to use and against all best advice once they balloon you shouldn't use them but I've continued to use these for quite some time and they've been fine so um, it looks dangerous it probably is dangerous and I keep them in a steel box but at the end of the day um, it's just a it's just something that happens to those batteries all the time these on the other hand aftermarket batteries tend to last a lot longer you will need an aftermarket charger uh, but those yeah, aftermarket chargers are universal because you see the cables are separate uh, there you go that's beef over with now I have done a completely separate video on the Atten and I'm not going to go into all the detail of that here um, but basically if you're wanting a cheap drone and um, a reliable one with a, a warranty behind it and a uh, you know worldwide parts availability, I'd suggest this is actually a pretty good buy. Certainly a good way to get into the hobby, and um, yeah, worth it, worth a try. Now, from a technology point of view, I think the biggest differences between these two, apart from their obvious size and everything else, is that this uh, the Atten has GPS and. The big difference with that is, is that the, with using the GPS, you're able to set a play area, if you like, which has got a ceiling, sides to it, and it also is able to lock on a position. So in film mode, it can hover and hold in a particular place. That is uh, quite a bit different from vertical hold, where you've got six axis gyro and you're just actually holding it stable in a spot but it can still get blown around if you're using a gps on this this will actually hold on a fixed position and it's a totally different thing the other thing is that you can get an aftermarket camera for this that fits onto the bottom uh, i've seen them on ebay for anywhere between 40 and 100 dollars um, it's a 720 camera i'm not sure about the frame rate but i wasn't going to get a camera for this because uh, 
I couldn't think of any good reason to get one to be honest. Um, but if you if you, this is the only drone you've got, then you might want to get that camera. There's also an LED bar that fits across the bottom, so when you're flying it at night, I've actually got a little bit of footage of it flying at night, and I think the lights on it are quite adequate. But this LED bar actually is more of like a torch that shines off the bottom, which is quite cool. Um, the, when you've got a, a gimbal on the bottom and you can actually film in 4K, uh, getting a 720 camera on the bottom of here doesn't really seem uh, quite the same. The other thing is that you notice these controllers are almost identical for, except for the name. Um, so uh, obviously quite a bit of technology sharing going on between these two devices, which I think is one of the great things about it. I've reviewed a lot of drones from uh, other sites and the quality, the, th the problem that you get into these lower end drones is the quality and the quality varies quite significantly because there's such a diversity of manufacturers. The good thing about this is that these guys have obviously shared tech and they obviously have some fairly strict standards when it comes to um, manufacture and um, what they're prepared to put their names behind. So I think you'll find that this is actually very, very good value for money and that's what I like about it the most. Um, it handles well, it's nippy, it is durable. I've scratched this one up quite a bit now already and um, it gets up and flies again every time. I think the biggest, the biggest problem with uh, this drone is it doesn't know if it's upside down and so if you accidentally land it upside down, accidentally turn it on and it scratches up the blades. So um, that's probably it. Uh, apart from that, I think we need to fly it. to subscribe and watch this crazy video too. Super fast awesome. <laughs>